Some of the most exciting stuff within the Wano arc has actually come outside of Wano. In between the acts of Wano, Oda's been dropping all these little hints on everything that's been going on. And based off of Oda's comments from Jump Fest to 2020, we should be getting some answers very soon. So in this video, I want to break down those comments and what they mean and give my theories on what happened to Hancock, Vivi, and Sabo. But first, I want to thank the sponsor for this video, the Anime Collective. The Anime Collective combines anime and streetwear to give you the perfect urban style you're looking for. They offer high quality hoodies, t-shirts, and sweaters themed around some of your favorite anime series. Series such as One Piece, Attack on Titan, Hunter x Hunter, and many more. Their merchandise comes in all sizes and they provide shipping worldwide. If you want someone else's word for it, you can look at the many reviews from happy customers. So if you're looking to add some dope anime merch to your collection, definitely go check out the Anime Collective. By using the link in the description, you could get 10% off on your first purchase or you could use my code KING. So yeah, Oda's comments from Jump Festa 2020 specifically hinted at things happening to Sabo, Vivi, and Hancock. You see, Jump Festa is this anime expo hosted by Shueisha, and every single year, Oda gives a message to the fans. Usually, Jump Festa happens at the end of December, so Oda usually uses this to kind of hype up things coming within the next year. Some of his most iconic comments have actually come from the Jump Festas. When he talked about the year of Sanji coming with Whole Cake Island, that was in Jump Festa 2016. The comment about the lurking legend was in Jump Festa 2018. And most recently in Jump Festa 2021, he talked about Shanks making a move. We could talk about that in a separate video, but for now, let's focus on Jump Festa 2020. In that year, Oda specifically said, at this point, the Wano Country arc is reaching its core. I've been excited to draw parts of the arc, so here we go. On the flip side, Sabo will, Vivi will, Hancock will, ah! <laughs> so yeah, clearly Oda was hinting at more critical information being given on those three characters. And when he delivered that message, we were already in the Odin flashback when Odin was like meeting Whitebeard for the first time. So by that point, we had just gotten all the information about the Reverie and Sabo. So Oda was hinting at things coming in the following year, but unfortunately the following year was 2020, one of the worst years ever. We got a pandemic, there was a bunch of breaks, and Oda couldn't even hit the 1000 chapter before the year ended. But because things got pushed back, we could kind of expect the things that he was hinting at before to be happening soon. Yes, Oda does tend to drag things out a little bit and there were a good amount of breaks in 2020 but we are two months into 2021 already. At this point we're also over 45 chapters deep into Act 3. It feels like we're building up to the climax so to me it makes the most sense that Act 3 will be ending soon and in between Act 3 and Act 4 we finally get some answers on Hancock, Vivi, and Sabo. So yeah based on that we could definitely expect something soon so why not take this chance to theorize what it could be. Now there's a lot to break down with the Reverie stuff so let's focus on Hancock first. Now before we look at it from a narrative story standpoint, I just want to look at it from a power standpoint first, in the most non-toxic way possible. But yeah, with Hancock and the Kuja, it's not actually just Hancock and like her sisters and the Kuja pirates that the world government are going after. Because when Hancock went into this deal to become a warlord with the world government, all of the Kuja people became recognized as pirates. So that's important to note because the world government are going to have to arrest all of them. And we know that the Kuja people are no joke. They all know hockey. They're all elite warriors. Against a bunch of ordinary marines, they're definitely not going to have an issue. The problem for the Kuja, though, is that they don't really have that many elite members. Of course, at the very top, you have Boa Hancock, but below her are probably her sisters, Mary Gold and Sandra Sonia. And from what we saw of them pre-time skip, they were not very impressive. Even in a 2v1 against pre-time skip Luffy, they kind of had the upper hand at first, but if that battle went on without any, like, reaper percussions, I think Luffy would have won. So overall, that's really the main issue for the Kuja. They don't really have any weak links. All their warriors are strong, but they don't really have any elites either. But of course, they do have Boa Hancock, who cannot be underestimated. I feel like she is one of the more slept on characters in terms of power. And I think that's because of multiple reasons. First off, because she's such a simp for Luffy, she's kind of goofy at times and is portrayed that way. And then the other thing I feel like a lot of people misunderstand is actually her bounty. It's only 80 million, so if feels kind of low, but you got to recognize that she got that bounty when she was 18 years old, just after one trip as a pirate. She's now 31 years old, so she's a fully grown, mature woman. Well, maybe not mature, but she's definitely grown. So yeah, the bounty is definitely not a good representation of how strong Hancock is. And from what we've seen of her power so far, it's pretty impressive. First off, her devil fruit, the Mero Mero no Mi, can just wipe out a whole bunch of people at once. And you might be thinking like, oh, somebody like Luffy is completely immune to that, but 
so far in the story, he's the only one that's gonna be immune. Even when she used it against the Marines, one of the Vice Admirals had to stab his own hand to like prevent himself from getting hot and bothered. On top of that, it also kind of helps her in physical combat. Whatever she kicks or punches, she could kind of turn into stone as well. And so far on the other side, the only person we know is Kobe and putting those two up against each other, I would have to take Hancock. I know Kobe is a beast and he's gonna grow stronger and stronger. His growth is crazy. But as of right now, I don't think he's enough to take out Hancock. And if it's just really Kobe coming by himself with a couple of other people and a bunch of Marines, they're just gonna get washed. But that's just a power discussion. Story-wise, it could go different ways. Because one thing that I always found interesting is why exactly the Marines decided to go after the Warlords. Like yes, the Warlord system was abolished and you wanna go and capture them, but if you just come back empty handed, it looks kind of weak and I don't expect Akainu to do that. And obviously Akainu knows that these guys are no joke, he didn't even want to abolish the system in the first place. So I actually do think that he sent some serious firepower across the board to try to go capture these warlords. So for Hancock, if an admiral or the SSG get involved, she might be in trouble. Like I said, they don't really have a lot of elites, so if a really strong person shows up, that might be enough to take in Hancock. And that story wise could lead us down a really dark path where Hancock gets brought back into slavery with the Celestial Dragons. And of course, this could just kickstart a crazy war where Luffy sees this and just launches a full-scale attack on the world government to free Hancock. Now, personally, I don't quite like this idea. I don't know if it's just me trying to protect Hancock. But at the same time, I've always seen the world government as the last part of the story, the last villain. And for now, the Straw Hats still feel like they have a lot more to explore. Finding another rogue Poneglyph, meeting Shanks, fighting Blackbeard, it just feels too early to go directly to the world government right after Wano. But at the same time, Oda has talked a lot about Endgame and how One Piece is wrapping up soon and this could be one way to do it. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this so definitely let me know in the description below. But for right now, I still do lean towards the world government being the final villain. At the same time, I do think Hancock could be captured but because Kobe is there, something could get sorted out. Kobe being in sword could mean he's in this special division against the world government, and he could definitely make a deal with Hancock to help protect her. Of course, they're both Luffy simps as well, so they could make a connection that way, or they might just fight each other to the death. But yeah, for me, I think the most likely option is that Hancock does end up getting captured, but because of Kobe's connection with sword, they're able to kind of work something out, and to ensure that Luffy is fine and knows everything, X Drake is also in Wano right now and he could kind of relay that message. But next let's move on to Sabo and Vivi and the very convoluted situation at the Reverie. I want to first separate them and break them down individually before trying to tie them all together. Starting with Vivi, we actually don't hear much about her specifically. What we actually learn about is the Kingdom of Alabasta and something happening there. Specifically, Garb told Shirahoshi and King Neptune something happened after the Reverie to the Kingdom of Alabasta. And this will make sense as well because Shirahoshi she was very good friends with Vivi during the reverie, so they probably would have stuck around with each other. But on this topic, Garp also said the Navy is currently using its full resources to solve the issue. But for now, please don't fear humans. And that's everything we got out of the manga, but there were some additional stuff added in the anime. We actually get scenes directly from Alabasta of people reading the newspaper and crying about something. Now, technically, this is not canon because it's the anime, but recently the anime has been spoiling the manga. It does feel like with the Wano anime, they're working closer to Oda and he's giving them some details on the down low. So while I don't think we should dig too deep into this, we could definitely use it as some sort of supporting evidence. Now, the situation with Sabo, we got a lot more information out of. First off, we see a lot more reactions about people hearing about his situation. The revolutionaries are freaking out. Ivankov saying this is impossible. Even Dragon has this grim look on his face. Apparently, they lost contact with Sabo during the reverie. Koala also is tearing up. But the most telling reaction for me is Dadan. She specifically says we just found out he was alive and they're crying about Sabo. And that one is very important because it clearly hints that something bad happened to Sabo. Now before the reverie even happened, we had even more information. Specifically, Sabo wanted to go to the reverie to declare war on the world government. Now once he was actually there, we find out his mission is to rescue Kuma. And then finally, we have some information from Blackbeard. The revolutionaries actually clashed with Fujitora and Green Bull during the fourth day of the Reverie. So overall, that's all the information that we know about Sabo. So now that we've broken them down individually, let's look at the big picture. And to do that, we gotta use our boy Big News Morgan. Big News Morgan! 
Because Morgans knows all the details. Specifically, he points out three headlines, the abolishment of the warlord system, an attempted murder, and a casualty. And one thing to point out here is that Morgans decides to print only two headlines, a front cover and a back cover. Now, I might be reading too much into this because he could just put three stories in there with two headlines. But I feel like the emphasis on the cover is something we could try to use. Now, meanwhile, you got the world government trying to silence Morgan with some threats and some money. Neither of them work because big news, Morgan, he's a proud journalist. And then the final bit of information we got was that Wapo has something to leak to big news, Morgan. And then after that is when we get the reaction of everything that happened. So based off of this, if we're going by the fact that there's only two headlines, one of them has to be the abolishment of the warlords. Everybody is reacting to that and cheering about that. So clearly that is on the paper. And then the other headline has to be about Sabo because that's what everybody is reacting to. Now, if you really wanted to use the anime scene as strong evidence, you could say it confirms that the Vivi situation and the Sabo situation are connected. But I feel like there's really no need to dive that deep into the anime scene. I think they just wanted to hammer home that something bad happened to Alabasta. Plus, personally, I don't think what happened to Vivi and what happened to Sabo are connected because we already found out Sabo and the revolutionaries fought the admirals on the fourth day of the reverie. Meanwhile, whatever happened to Alabasta happened after the reverie finished. So I think based off of that, you could kind of separate these two events. So for me, there are two options that are most likely in my opinion. And they're kind of the same thing, just with flip-flop scenarios. Option number one, the person that died, the casualty is King Cobra. A lot of people have predicted this because Cobra, he's kind of getting old. He's kind of a disposable character as well. We know the guy, we like the guy, but if he dies off screen, we're not going to be mad at it. He's also digging a little too deep into the world government's information. So if he dies, it would make sense. This could also be the headline that gets printed that the world government is trying to cover up. And what will go hand in hand with this is Wapple's leak to Big News Morgans. I feel like what Wapple leaked to Morgans is something we could pretty much confirm. The only thing that Wapple really knows is that Vivi has a connection to the Straw Hats and was a pirate before. Sure, you could spin it like Wapple got paid by the world government to say like Sabo killed Vivi or something like that, but he can't really back that up with anything whereas he saw Vivi with the Straw Hats and there were other people with him as well. So to me in this option, the move is they kill Cobra, try to cover it up, it doesn't work. They tell Wapple to leak that information to Big News Morgan, therefore painting Vivi as a pirate and a criminal. That would also align with the reaction from the people of Alabasta because their king is dead and their princess is now probably on the run as a criminal. So that's the Vivi aspect. On the other hand, we have Sabo with the attempted murder. And specifically, I think Sabo attempted to murder Bartholomew Kuma. Kuma is an element I feel like not a lot of people have talked about in the Reverie scenarios. And I first saw this idea from my guy Studio Alex. I don't think he has that video up anymore, but go subscribe to his channel anyway, he makes great content. But yeah, the mission for Sabo was to go and rescue Kuma, but what if there's no way to turn Kuma back? I feel like a lot of us believe that there's some kind of magical button that could just turn Kuma good again. And that's of course based off of his deal with Vegapunk and Vegapunk being a good person. But first off, Vegapunk could just be evil. And second of all, maybe Kuma just sacrificed himself. So if there's no option to actually turn Kuma back, maybe Sabo is like, okay, I'll try to put him out of his misery. But instead he couldn't do it because of Green Bull and Fujitora clashing with them on the fourth day. But what happens after that? Well, I think the only option is that he gets captured. Based off of Dadan's reaction, something bad had to have happened to Sabo. Sure, death is an option, but I don't think that's realistic. You can't really kill Sabo off screen. And even with this capture option, I don't think he's actually captured. I feel like out of Fujitora and Green Bull, one of them is working with Sword. And similar to the Hancock situation, that's another connection that they make where they put up some false information about Sabo being captured, but he's actually working with them. And again, X Drake is in Wano right now to relay information to Luffy. That way Luffy doesn't get pissed and go to the world government. And we get the ace situation all over again. Now that's just personally my belief. It could be very possible. We do get this ace situation again, but I do like this idea better because I want to see the Straw Hats just go on their own mission for a while, find the One Piece, and then come back to the world government and this final war. Oh yeah. And with Sabo, when he was talking about the Kuma mission, he specifically said, we will not get caught we will either succeed or die. So I feel like he's like really serious. Like he has that sort of determination where he's not gonna get caught and cause issues for the revolutionary. So him actually getting captured here, I feel like that's why it generates such a strong reaction from like Dragon and everybody else. Plus the fact that he was trying to kill Kuma
Akuma, that would generate a crazy reaction as well. So yeah, that's the first option. And option two is pretty similar. Pretty much we're just flipping Cobra and Kuma. In this scenario, Cobra actually lives and Kuma actually dies. Everything else pretty much stays the same, but this one could make a little more sense. First off, if the world government failed to kill Cobra, they would want to cover that story up more. Like say if the story is like the CP0 try to kill King Cobra, that would look very bad for them. And it could be like the perfect bait and switch where we all think Cobra is dead, but he's actually not. And in this scenario, you could also have Cobra escape with Vivi, maybe with Sai and the Grand Fleets, and they could end up in Wano where Luffy and gang learn more about it. Cobra gets a safe haven in Wano, and Vivi rejoins the Straw Hats. I think that's definitely a possible option that's grown on me a lot. But also in this option, we will have Sabo actually killing Kuma. And again, of course, that would generate a very strong reaction out of Dragon, who specifically said we need to get the details first, which as my guy Studio Alex mentioned, would make a lot of sense as a response to this situation. I feel like I actually like this second scenario better because it's kind of a twist. Everybody's expecting old man Cobra to die, but it turns out to be Kuma. That would be a pretty good twist. But Oda could just go the route of killing Cobra as well, or he could just do something completely different that you might have some theories on. So let me know in the comments below. But as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button. To keep up with this channel, you gotta hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to get notified. Thank you to my King Pirates Elite members on YouTube and Patreon for supporting the channel. Be sure to follow me on Twitch, I'm D Streams. Follow me on Twitter, I'm DKing4, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.